Thousands of Canadian air passengers are on notice. Air Canada could start cancelling flights imminently as the clock winds down in negotiations with the pilots' union. Businesses are urging the federal government to step in, but it's so far refusing to do so. The CBC's Julia Wong joins us now from the Edmonton International Airport. Okay, Julia, let's start with the latest on the talks. Where do things stand right now? Well, David, it really seems like we're at an impasse when it comes to these talks. It doesn't look like there's been much headway, and it seems like the sticking point is wages. Now, we know that the union is calling for better compensation for its pilots, but what Air Canada has said is that... Um, the union is asking for unreasonable wage demand. So all of that has lots of people concerned and worried, especially here where we are at the airport. It is very much top of mind. Air Canada has said that as of today, they have not canceled flights because of this possible job action, but they say they are taking steps, precautionary steps. They say that they've stopped accepting uh, live animals and perishable goods. And they're also pre-positioning planes to be in certain places so they can get maintenance in case there is that disruption. As you mentioned earlier, Earlier, this has a lot of people worried about what it means in terms of business. Commerce groups have been calling on the Prime Minister to jump in, to wade into this affair. And what we heard from the Prime Minister earlier today is that this is not something he wants Ottawa to get involved with. He is stressing that it really comes down to the company, that it really comes down to the union. And in some respects, it seems like he's sort of pre-positioning blame to fall on them if things don't go well. Take a listen. Every time there's a strike, people say, oh, you'll get the government to come in and fix it. We're not going to do that. We believe in collective bargaining, and we're going to keep pushing people to do it. Yes, you know, we have and we will protect the Canadian economy. But first and foremost is putting all the pressure on the people who need to feel that pressure, the unions and the employers, to figure out how not to hurt Canadians and the Canadian economy by getting to the right place. So as you can hear, some very strong, very forceful words from the Prime Minister. As for the union, what it said so far today is that it is meeting again with the airline in hopes of reaching an agreement. Yeah, Air Canada said it wants uh, binding arbitration imposed. The government says uh, a go get a deal. But passengers, Julia, you've been speaking to a lot of air travelers today. I mean, they got to be nervous. What are you hearing from them? Yeah, passengers really are the ones who are very much caught in the middle of all of this. And as we've been here at the airport, we're really hearing a mixed bag of reaction from passengers. You know, some of them are telling us, well, we're not really too worried. We're sort of just taking this in stride. Others have expressed uh, stress, saying, you know, air travel can be stressful at the best of times. And now you add in that uncertainty. Air Canada has allowed passengers to change flights. So a lot of them have done so in preparation in case there is that possible uh, job action. But obviously that just adds a whole other wrench to travel plans. I did also speak with some folks here today who, they, you know, they were flying out today. It was pre-planned for them to be leaving today. And they're saying they're grateful. They're happy that they're flying out today so that they don't get caught up if things get a little bit sticky. Relieved, relieved. Yeah, we're we were watching the, well, watch reading it up on the internet, and we're quite happy to see that we're going to get in before the 18th. I do have to be back on Sunday. I have commitments, so um, if I have to miss, it's not the end of the world. But I would like to be back on Sunday. Uh, it's kind of part and parcel with flying these days at all so I've kind of come to expect it. It is a bit stressful you know we have to all get like you know approvals from managers you know to take an extra day off and then just scrambling around because we thought we have extra two days for packing and whatnot so we're just yeah pretty much I think my, my wife didn't sleep the whole night <laughs> just for packing. As you can hear, a mixed range of uh, reaction from folks, a mixed bag of how people are feeling. So some key dates we do want to reiterate. Sunday is the day that the airline or the pilots union could issue either a strike, uh, lockout or a, a strike notice. Sunday is the day when flights could start to be cancelled. And then as you go from there, it could be Wednesday um, for there to be a complete shutdown of services. Yeah, Julia, I wonder if that guy says he's relieved to be getting out. We'll see how he feels about when he's got to try to come home. All right, that's the CBC's Julia Wong in Edmonton with us. All right, we want to turn now to Duncan D, who's a former chief operating officer at Air Canada. And Duncan D joins us now from New York City. Uh, Duncan D, thanks for joining us. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, David. Uh, as a former executive with Air Canada, I know you're not at the bargaining table and not directly there. I just wonder what your sense is of what we've heard from the public posturing and, and inside the company of where these talks are. How close could this be to falling apart or maybe having a breakthrough? 
Well, David, the fact that both parties remain at the bargaining table uh, leads me to have a tiny bit of optimism, uh, also coupled with the fact that uh, management has uh, tabled an offer that is uh, quite uh, generous by any measure, a 30% increase over three years. Let's not forget that WestJet pilots, represented by the exact same union, uh, accepted a deal and avoided a strike that was 24% over four years. So, you know, Air Canada is apparently quite serious about avoiding a strike by tabling an offer that beat that uh, winning offer over at WestJet. I, I wonder what you make of the, the political dynamic around this, Duncan, right? Because uh, you, you do have them calling for the Prime Minister's government to get involved here. You heard the clip of him saying the pressure needs to stay at the table. You need to get the deal. Pierre Polyev has kind of sided with the, uh, the pilots, and we know the NDP is not going to rush to management side here. So how does that external dynamic affect what's happening at the bargaining table when it doesn't really look like the weight of government is going to come to bear on this right now? You know, I'm not even sure how external that pressure is. My understanding is that the Minister of Labor met with both sides yesterday. And today. Uh, where he le and, to and today. And he leaned on very heavily on uh, both sides to come to a deal. So, you know, that pressure is being uh, brought to bear. Um, you know, the, the, the might of the federal government is being brought to bear at the negotiating table for not just one side, but both sides to find a solution to this. And frankly, that's a you know, a pretty solid start for the government at this stage. Now, you know, at some point, you know, the prime minister also outlined the fact that the potential impact a strike could have on millions of Canadians and millions uh, and, and many uh, Canadian businesses, you know, like today, the strike hasn't even happened yet, but Air Canada has stopped accepting perishables. Mm. People may not know what those perishables are, but I do. Those are that's seafood in the Atlantic provinces that are not no longer going to be exported to Europe or to the United States, for example. So the impact is already being felt, albeit still in a in a in a small way. But if this uh, goes to down to the wire and there is a strike, you know, then I believe all bets are off. So we, we you mentioned not accepting perishables, not accepting pets. Uh, they are prepositioning some planes to different areas so that they can be looked after should there be a prolonged sort of um, um, stoppage um, if this if these talks fail. At what point do you do you get to before the Sunday notification deadline? Before Air Canada just says we're going to preemptively cancel flights the way WestJet did when it had its challenge with the mechanics earlier this summer. Well, you know, I think that the clock is ticking. As I said earlier today, uh, cargo is being impacted. I would expect that by Sunday, as a former chief operating officer, what I would be doing is looking at the long haul flights of Air Canada, because you do not mm -hmm. want to send aircraft across the oceans and then have them stuck there because of a strike. And then on, on Monday and Tuesday, you're going to start seeing progressively more cancellations. So shorter haul flights, flights, uh, you know, in, in different regions across the country. By, you know, midnight Tuesday, where it's basically just uh, a closed Air Canada network where, you know, at that point, the only thing that would be operating would be flights operated by Air Canada's regional partners, Air Canada Jazz and Provincial Airlines in Newfoundland. Right. So, so the, the pay is the big sticking point with the pilots. Uh, you, you said there's a 30 percent, as you said, there's a 30 percent offer on the table over three years, which is bigger than what WestJet got. But the Air Canada pilots make the point that they're a slightly different airline, of course, than WestJet is. And their comparison is the United States salary range for pilots uh, for the big American airlines. And they're still way below that uh, is the argument. I mean, how close to an agreement do you think 30 percent over three years can, can, can get you? Well, so far, it hasn't gotten us close to an agreement. So, I mean, I think that uh, we're looking at somewhere north of 30 percent uh, over three years. But, you know, having been at the bargaining table before, it takes both sides to make a deal. I think, you know, this is where the prime minister was actually right. Uh, you need to get both sides uh, at the table, feeling the pressure, feeling the, the weight of uh, essentially making life difficult for millions of Canadians to understand that, you know, if it's not 30%, then what is it? What is the reasonable offer? You know, basically picking and choosing American salaries and importing it to Canada without looking at things like the fact that Air Canada pilots enjoy a defined benefit traditional pension when U.S. pilots have what's called mm. a 401k, which is basically an RRSP, um, you know, those comparisons have to be made as well. So it's got to be apples to apples. And at the end of the day, 
you know, Air Canada's customers are largely making Canadian paychecks. And so you can't have uh, Canadian customers with Canadian paychecks paying American pilot salaries. But here's the, the, the pressure on the economy and the pressure on the government, right? We had the port strike in Vancouver. There was the, the WestJet interruptions. There was the interruptions with the railways that did end up going to binding arbitration, uh, much to the chagrin of Jagmeet Singh and the NDP. Uh, the government wants a negotiated settlement, but it also wants the Canadian economy to function and air travel to function, and it's under enormous pressure to make those two things happen. So uh, how soon do you think we need to get the final answer from government, or do you think we would see a final answer from government? If we get a strike or a lockout notice on Sunday, is there any way you think the government lets us go into next week without imposing some sort of binding arbitration option? Look, I think that's the uh, million-dollar question. And at the end of the day, I think the only way the government can prevent um, harm to the economy, tremendous harm particularly to the economy um, east of the uh, uh, Toronto area, mm. so Quebec and Atl the Atlantic provinces, is to uh, you know be to anticipate and to be ready in the event that there is a potential job action. What is the government willing to do? Is it to apply more pressure at the bargaining table to try to get a deal, or you know something else? At this point in time, I think what the focus has to be is on the bargaining table to try to get both sides as close as possible to table you know things like their best and final offers and see how far those are you know perhaps there's a way to get this thing over the finish line before uh, you know things fall apart mm. but you know that's only going to happen if enough pressure is applied on both parties to get to a deal Stephen McKinnon brand new to the labor portfolio and he has been busy uh, Duncan D I know you're busy as well I want to thank you for taking the time to speak with us today it's Duncan D former chief operating officer at Air Canada thank you sir